guys, this is Kelly of Kelly Plans It All. Welcome back. I uh, let you know in my introductory video that I'm on the admin team for Hamiltoons Dallas. So one of the things we're going to do today is go through the process of how do you set up and run a successful Hamiltoons event in your city if you don't have one already. So of course, first you want to go check out Instagram, Facebook, make sure there isn't already an existing Hamiltoons group in your city. I know that they are kind of all over the country. I know DC has a group and like Minneapolis, St. Paul has a group and I think Philadelphia area may have a group. There's um, several on the West Coast as well. I think there may be like a San Francisco group and a Los Angeles group. There's a couple. So you've got to like make sure you're not already missing the boat on one that's in your area. But if you can't find one, let's get you started. So I'm going to link in this video who you need to email. But it is uh, Hamiltoons at Adventureland.com. That is the email address for the Hamiltoons Hamilton lawyers so that you can get the licensing, which is free to get started, but you do need their legal blessing, so to speak. They will have you sign a contract. Um, so you want to first assemble some people you can trust to help you with this. You want to make sure that it's not just you. It's going to take more than one person to run this. Um, and throughout the course of this video, we're going to talk to some of the other people on the Hamiltoons Dallas team. I'm going to show you how we run one of our events and we're going to go through the whole process. But first things first, you need to get the legal blessing of the Hamilton lawyer. So uh, I will tell you, they're going to give you a contract. It's going to give you some specific things that you can and cannot do. Some of those things are negotiable. So if you have questions, feel free to email them and say, you know, I really think we, it would be better for our event if we did it this way. Some things they can budge on and they will work with you. I know we negotiated parts of our contract, uh, but some things they cannot budge on. They will not let you post videos of Hamilton's events live with singing anywhere on the internet. That is non-negotiable. That will not happen. Um, if you go look at our Instagram, which is at Hamilton's Dow, I run that. Um, there's no video with sound. There are in our story some video where I've dropped the sound out to make it legal. Um, but for copyright reasons, we cannot post any videos with the music. So that's non-negotiable. So don't ask. <laughs> they will tell you no. You can't do it. We have asked and asked. Um, it, no, absolutely not. Um, and they're protecting their brand. And I totally get that. So we want to make sure that we are in the good graces of the Hamilton lawyers because we love them and we respect the work of the creators. And we, we don't want to be in their bad side at all. So just make sure that whatever your your is in your contract, you're going to hold to. Um, it's very important. It's an important show. These creators work so hard and we want to protect their work while still taking the time to be fans and have a good time. So, uh, let's get to it. This is Melody. She is our DJ extraordinaire for Hamiltoons. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Um, so, if someone was trying to start their own Hamiltoons, you're going to kind of give them your perspective from running the music. So, what kind of equipment do you use personally? Um, well, professionally, I'm a DJ and an MC, so I do a lot of private events. Um, so, I'm not working off of like a real technical AV board. I have a real simple little basic mixer that I have three mic inputs because we found that three mics are enough for what we're doing. Um, I have a couple of CD players because we actually were playing the music tracks from that, but if you're kind of in the new millennium and uh, you're actually using digital stuff, uh, we can also, I've been rolling stuff off my iPad, I've had people hand me stuff and roll it off the phone. So whatever's more convenient for them to do that. Um, so that's the basic equipment. Have you a few mic stands, have the lyrics printed out, and uh, make sure you've got some music stands to put those books on so people don't have to hold them. Awesome. Does so, that answer a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So during the show, what is your role? Like, as we're rolling and singing, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> well, usually I'm back there singing along. <laughs> I'm usually dancing. I'm usually being silly. Um, I have found that I just wanted to be behind the scenes, but now I've kind of turned into the hype person the way a DJ would be. So I'm a little Lawrence in the uh, back there. Makes um, sense. And I just kind of keep everybody pumped up and keep the music going, make sure that the levels are correct, uh, make sure we can hear our singers and that we can hear the music so everybody can sing along. All right, so if someone was trying to start their own Hamiltoons, what's the minimum equipment they would need? Like if they were just gonna like start one today and they didn't have professional equipment, what do they need 
at a minimum to get it going? A minimum, you need at least a, one speaker. You need to have one good speaker. Uh, you need to have at least three microphones. Um, I would say one good little mixing board would work, or if you've got a mixing program in an iPad or a tablet, that would work. Um, and then, of course, the soundtrack would basically do it. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your information with us and, and being who you are and hyping us up. We love you. Well, we love you. Uh, we. I love you guys, too. And, hey, if you're starting a Hamilton's, good luck. Break a leg. And, uh, yeah, let's do this. Okay. So let's talk for a second about how you sign people up for the parts in the song. So the way we do it is we sell tickets to singers for $10. And then on the Monday night preceding the event, so like our events are usually on Thursdays, Monday night at 7 p.m. we send out a Google Doc to all the email addresses who bought a ticket uh, through our Eventbrite link. And then we have them go into the Google Doc and they have a certain number of points to sign up for songs. It's usually anywhere from 8 to 16 points depending on how many people bought tickets. So if it's a week where we haven't sold as many tickets because maybe like this week is spring break. So we haven't sold as many singer tickets for our event as we normally do. Uh, so people have more points to spend so to speak. So and then every song is broken down by part and every part is assigned a point number based on how many uh, lines it has in that song. So for instance, if you're wanting to sing Burn as Eliza, that's a four point part. That's the biggest part. Our parts range from one to four points. And then there's some parts that are free. Like if you're Madison saying France in the cabinet battles, like that's free. We're not going to charge you a point to say France and wander off the stage. Uh, that You're fine. But so this is kind of like what our, our sign up looks like if you were to print it out from Google Docs. So every part in each song is listed and then the person singing it, um, they type their name next to it. And we do check the edits and make sure that people don't go right over other people's names um, and that, you know, everyone's on the up and up. And if anyone's not been honest in the past, they have been um, removed. So, sassy. Sorry, my dog is like all over my feet. Um, so... The, the whole thing is we want to be fair and we want people to spend their points. If, um, you know, we get to the day of the show we and there's not all the parts taken, we cut it off at about two and then bring the physical printed list to the event and people can sign up in person the day of. If they didn't buy a ticket in advance or if they um, want to change parts or whatever, we, we let them do that, you know, as much as we can and try to be fair about it. Uh, but that's the sign-up process that we do. Uh, we actually had asked some other Hamilton's groups and came up with that strategy. You can, you I've seen it done more of a free-for-all style. We're a more organized group than that, and we, we want to have it kind of sorted ahead of time, give people, I know some people are nervous about singing, uh, give them an opportunity to practice their parts ahead of time. Uh, but you can run your event any way you want. That's what's worked for us, so I wanted to share our process with you before we get into some of the other how-tos. So once we've got all of our equipment set up, it looks something like this. We have three microphones in stands, three music stands. We've got the DJ booth kind of set up in different places. In this outdoor setup, it was kind of behind the singer. Sometimes it's to the side. Um, sometimes we bring our own table. Sometimes the venue supplies the table and the linens for the table. It really just depends on who we're working with. We just make sure that before the event, we work out all of those details with the management. We usually will schedule a walkthrough if it's a new venue so that we're not walking in and not knowing what we're setting up. So we end up with our setup and then as singers come in, they check in. We have a printout of the song sign up on the clipboard. We give them a sticker. At first we use like star stickers. Now we actually printed the Hamilton's logo on some stickers and hand those out so we can identify our paid singers. And then we get ready to start the show. At the start of the show, Nicole is um, our founder and she, uh, her and her sister Natalie decided to start this Hamilton's because they had heard about it happening elsewhere and just wanted to get it done here in Dallas. So um, she's kind of our fearless leader. She will get up and read the rules um, and usually just kind of give a little bit of information about how it's going to flow 
how to hold the mic um, because a lot of people have never sung in public before. They may not know to hold the mic up to their mouth and not down at their belly button. Um, so we give some direction on that about which way to enter and exit the stage depending on what's going on, where they wait on deck. We usually have our singers wait on deck uh, the song before so that they are ready to walk up on stage and we can keep it rolling pretty much. And so she gives all of those directions and then we get started and sing from beginning to end of first act. We take a 15-ish minute intermission and then do second act the same way. So um, our singers, like I said, come up, sing the parts. We have the lyrics printed out and in sheet protectors and binders. And so they can follow along if they would like to. The track that we use is the original Broadway cast recording, but it's been edited a little bit so that the singer's voices are lower. And we didn't want to give a straight instrumental as a backing because when you get into some of those like cabinet battles and um, some of those songs in act two, there's not a lot to cue off of if you're not super familiar with the, the way the song goes, or even if you are, sometimes it's just hard. So we wanted to give a little bit more um, vocal support for people who need it. So we have the voices dropped really low on our recording so that they're there if you need them and our DJ can fiddle with it. Uh, Melody can turn them up higher if uh, it's an ensemble part and we need more vocals or if it's someone who just is singing and they're nervous and they need a little more, she can turn that up. But throughout the whole show, Melody is our hype person. She is keeping the crowd going. She is keeping the show flowing. She's adjusting levels of sound, making us sound good, kind of like she was talking about. Um, and that's it. That's it's that easy. Like there's a lot of work on the back end of things to get everything set up. So the biggest thing is to make sure that you have people you can trust, people who will show up and do the job they've been assigned to do and assign people a specific job. So we have a spreadsheet for every event that tells who's in charge of what. So there's no misunderstanding about what you're meant to be doing during the course of the event. Everyone does their part and it, it all goes smoothly because we don't leave anything to chance. That's just our preference. I've seen other cities do it much more loosey-goosey. If that's your style, feel free. Um, Nicole and I are alike in that we're kind of over planners in a lot of ways. So, uh, that works for her and it works for me too. That's the way my brain works. So um, if you're interested in starting your own Hamiltons, like I said, you can email the Hamiltons lawyers and Hamilton lawyers, they, they will get you set up with a contract. Uh, I have all of that information in the episode notes so that you can go in and find all of that, email them, get started on your own. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Come find me on Instagram at Kelly Plans It All, on Twitter at Kelly Plans It All. I'm everywhere. All of that's linked in the episode notes as well. Tell me, what do you think about this? Do, is there Hamiltons in your area? Do you want to start a Hamiltons? Do you want to attend a Hamiltons that somebody else put on? What's your level of desire of involvement with this? I personally, it's a huge part of my life and I love it and I love the people that I get to do it with. Um, it's a really, really special thing to participate in, um, either as an attendee or if you want to start your own Hamiltons. It doesn't matter. It's so much fun and to get to be around other people who love the thing that you love is super exciting. So, let me know what you think about it. Comment, like, share this if there's someone you know that would like this information. Um, subscribe if you want more theater and planner information. I'm here for all of it all the time. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye.